So as Richard mentioned, my name is Sean DeFore. I'm the Vice President of Services for Children and Families here at LSSM. And I'm privileged to be over our foster care adoption, family preservation, refugee services, as well as the three very special programs that we're highlighting tonight. The Wayne County Family Center, Neighborhood House, and our Heartline Residential Program. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what these programs do, and then you're going to learn a lot more uh, by hearing the stories of some of those that we serve through the programs, um, not just me up here speaking. If I was to describe what these um, community support programs do, I'd say that they come alongside families when times are hard. And often there are programs that are there for people when there's nowhere else to turn. Uh, I think about our shelter, the Wayne County Family Center, and it's a place where someone can come and find shelter when they're without a permanent house while they work to get back on their feet. That's coming alongside families when life is hard. I think about our Heartline program and working with women to transition back from being in an institution into the community and providing a safe place and support uh, and encouragement and confidence in their ability to accomplish something that maybe they haven't had before. That's coming alongside families when life is hard. I think about our neighborhood house and the 30,000 meals that we serve every year to families who might be between paychecks, might be without a paycheck, um, or maybe they had to make the hard choice between getting medicine and getting food and they need a meal. That's coming alongside families when life is hard. Uh, and that's what these programs do, and that's why they're so important. Uh, when I think about the future of our work, and Mark talked a little bit about our desire to serve the whole person through a continuum of care in their natural setting, I think I see these three special programs coming alongside families when life is hard in a much deeper way and in a much com more comprehensive way with a much longer lasting impact. And I want to talk a little bit about what that looks like. Um, when I talk about a continuum of care, uh, I talk about providing an array of services, let's take Neighborhood House for example, um, to a young child or a family that goes beyond just the hot meal that they're receiving. Right? For example, we know that there's a strong link between nutrition and academic performance. Imagine how a child who goes to school hungry in the morning can pay attention or perform throughout the day. Right? Or how can they concentrate on doing homework when they come home at night? Um, I think it's incumbent upon us at Neighborhood House not just to provide that hot meal, not just to read to them so they improve their literacy skills, not just to provide them a safe haven where they can they're partaken in, in recreation in a safe place. But what about teaching families about nutrition? What about assessing what their multiple needs are instead of addressing their singular need so we can connect them with the child care they need so that parent can maintain a job? Maybe get job skills training or a GED so they have more opportunity. Right, maybe connected with mental health resources so we can address the mental health issue that maybe keeps them on the edge and keeps them at risk. Right. Those are the kinds of services that we're going to be able to wrap around families so we can walk with them when times are hard and come alongside them in a much more deeper and comprehensive way. And when Mark talked about providing services in the home, in the natural setting, um, you know, I, I think back to our foster care programming, which most of you are probably familiar with that service. Um, it's interesting how no matter how broken or how traumatized a child's home might be, when they leave foster care, guess where the first place they go to return is? Their home. No matter how broken, no matter how difficult their upbringing was there. Because for them, that's their sense of permanence or sense of belonging that's their counterpoint to the outside world right um, when i say the word home i get this visceral reaction I, I get this feeling like i imagine you all do when you think about home and it was hard to put into words but we tried to define 
we talk about serving folks in their home in a natural setting, what is that, how do we define that? What does that look like? So we have up here the definitions that you've come up with of home. So it's the place where an individual experiences a sense of permanence, has a magnetic pull. Now think about your own home, and I'm sure you can feel that. Acts as a point of alignment with the outside world and allows for a sense of permanent, of personal control. Now not every home has that, but it has some elements of that. And I think our job is to make, just like we're treating the whole person, help keep them whole, is to also make their home a whole in terms of this definition. And some of these elements that we have below describe what that means, that sense of permanence, that sense of belonging, acceptance being a place where a person intrinsically wants to return. A uh, place where they're surrounded by community, friends, families, and feel a sense of belonging. That's where we aspire to provide services because that's where folks want to return. That's where they experience a sense of permanence. Um, and that's where we'll be going in the future with our services, including the three that you see tonight, eventually. So without further ado, that's my little introduction to our community support programs. I see I killed the dessert line, so I won. <laughs> Take that dessert. <laughs> okay, I'd like to um, start with our Heartline uh, residential program, and I want to invite up uh, the director of our program, very special um, young lady, Mary Ellen White. <laughs> Sister Mary Ellen. Desserts winning again. Uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about Heartline, and then we're going to show you a video about the Heartline program, and then you'll hear from one of the folks that's actually been a beneficiary of our services there. Good evening. Um, I'm glad to be here this evening. Heartline is a residential program for women on the east side of Detroit. We're in the Mack and Van Dyke area, and uh, we ha have room for 33 women. We house on average 25 or so. And it's a very structured program. Sometimes the ladies will say it's too structured. But uh, it's designed to help women get back on their feet uh, through a series of classes in order to help them think uh, differently than maybe they have been. Self-esteem classes, money management, that's always a biggie because we always have problems with that. We never have enough money to manage is usually what the problem is. But, uh, and the women that are, say, are, to, are going to save for housing, they have to save 60% of their net pay once they start working, which they, they sometimes they'll say, well, I'll save $10. And I'll say, well, you're going to be 92 by the time you move out, you know. So um, they have to save 60% of their money towards their housing. And we help through many donations from persons like yourselves of household items and monetary donations to help them to get a place of their own. Uh, we don't help with rent, uh, but we do help with personal items and, and things like almost like setting up a college dorm again and that. So uh, as um, I, I'm gonna, I don't want to take up all the time because Catherine is a much better speaker than I am. So. And then you want to see the video. 